Hello, and welcome to the show. Today, I'll explain why you can't smell a round pig in a square hole. So, why don't you join us? Do you know how you smell? I'm not being rude. I mean, how this thing works. It's really quite an involved story. And it starts with particles in the air, which are too small to see, so I've made models of them, and I'm going to fill the air with them. Here goes. The air really is full of all sorts of things like that. Not coloured like that, but really different shapes and sizes, as far as we can tell. And that's really where the story starts, because if the air is full of them, when you breathe, they go in and out of your lungs. And normally, that's all they do. They go down and come up again. But when you sniff, you take in a very fast jet of air, and it hits some funny little bones in your nose that we can't look at, so we'll have to use somebody else's nose and show them to you. There they are. There's the nose hole, and if you look inside, you'll see little curly bones. When you sniff, that very fast column of air rushes in, hits those, and it throws it into whirlpools and eddies and wafts it up to the top of your nose cavity. But we can't see any further inside that, so we'd better look inside mine. Here goes. The bit we're interested in is just in here. I've coloured it red. It's up just there, and it separates my nose cavity from my brain. It's a very thin bit of skull. And I can show you that bone on the real skull. Have a look up the nose and I'll put a torch behind it. Right up at the top, as I turn the torch on, you should see some points of light. There they are. Here we are, up the nose, and you can see shining on the floor of the skull, those little points of light. In fact, it's a bony sieve, and it separates the brain from the nose cavity, and it's a very vulnerable part. It's why people say, don't get water up your nose in parts of Australia, because it has little creatures in it that can invade your brain through those very holes. But what normally invades through them, or goes through them, really, is part of the brain, little hairy projections that come down into your nose cavity. Although we're not really sure, we think their surface might be something a bit like this, covered with holes of various shapes and sizes. And the particles in the air come along and they fit into certain of those holes. And depending on their shape and size, they'll give you a certain smell. For example, that might be the smell of flowers. And all the particles shaped like that will find a hole like that, fit into them, and you get flowers. If there are two particles of different kinds, that one, for example, might be cloves, you'll get there the smell of cloves and flowers. And that'll be an interesting sort of vegetable smell. Of course, there's some particles that'll fit both. Here we are. That's got that shape, and it will either fit this sort of cavity, the same one as the one over there, or it'll fit this one. So the same particle will give you both, say, cloves and flowers. Others will, well, that might be peppermint, just plugs into its own socket. Others will be a different shape and size, but as long as they fit that hole, they'll give you flowers as a smell. And others won't fit anything at all, and presumably we don't smell them. Air itself is made up of oxygen and nitrogen, two gases that don't smell to us. But as far as we can see, although the picture's a bit more complex than that, it does rest on this sort of lock and key principle where particular bits and pieces will plug particular holes that fit them, and if they do, that's what you smell. <laughs>